So this is a water tube boiler. Let's have a basic overview of how steam is produced. Boilers, the heart of the steam system on ships. Before we talk about how they work, let's have a basic look at the system and why it's important. We need steam for heating up various things on board in order for the ship to operate, such as water and fuel. Some examples are heating fuel oil to appropriate levels for the purifiers, main engine, or even just storage. We also heat water for the accommodation use, such as showers and in the cruise ships for swimming pools to keep people happy. Steam on cargo tankers are sometimes used for turbine pumps to unload our cargo. The simple fact is that all ships will have a boiler to produce steam. This steam is usable heat that we can transfer all around the ship, which later will condense when enough heat is transferred. This condensate will return to what we call a hot well, which is like a feed tank for the boiler. Afterwards, the boiler will heat up this water, which will be transformed once again in steam. Ideally, this is a closed cycle in which all steam is condensed and collected when its heat is utilized, to then be turned into steam inside the boiler. However, steam leaks and blowdowns, which are drainings or skimmings, which I showed in my previous boiler water testing and treatment video, will require us to regularly fill the boiler system with new water. So what water do we use for the boiler? Boiler feed water is distilled water which we produce in our freshwater generators. A video was made to explain more about that if you're curious. This distilled water we treat chemically to ensure that the process of evaporation and condensation that will occur in the steam system does not leave impurities or deposits that could cause problems in the future. We can start studying the system from the source, which is the hot well, where the chemically treated feed water is ready and heated for the boiler. Feed pumps after send water to the boiler or recirculate it back to the hot well if the boiler does not require more water. We'll talk more about that later. Afterwards, we have our main machine, the boiler. This type of boiler is called a water tube boiler. Normally on ships, we have two types, fire tube and water tube boilers. There are also boilers that use both characteristics that are called composite boilers, which during navigation are fire tube and at port or in operation are water tube. The difference is what fluid flows within the internal tubes of the boiler. Either exhaust gases or burner gases for fire tube boilers, or boiler feed water for water tube boilers. Both have the same purpose of boiling water to evaporate it and produce steam. Let's have a basic overview of what is happening in this Alberg water tube boiler. First, we have two areas where water is stored, which are the water drum and steam drum, where we have soon the steam and water together. Here, we have upcomer tubes and downcomer tubes. Here we have the main and pilot burner. And finally we have here the force draft fan. This area of the boiler is called the furnace 
which later leads to the funnel up stack. Now let's look at what happens to create steam. First we have water within the water drum, upcomer tubes and downcomer tubes, as well as the steam drum up to a certain level. First the combustion fan will blow at high speeds to purge any accumulated gases and afterwards it will lower in speed to prepare for the burners. The pilot burner uses diesel oil and a spark to create the first pilot flame. After the flame sensors on the pilot burner confirm that there is an ignition, then the main burner will receive heavy fuel oil or diesel oil flow, which then the pilot burner flame will ignite. After confirming the main burner flame, the pilot burner will stop and return to its original position, allowing the main burner to continue by itself. This flame and its gases are very hot. They come in contact with the water drum, however due to its volume it will not evaporate here. However, the upcomer tubes are less in volume and have baffles to allow more contact time with the burner gases. Here we see the heat transfer from the gases to the water which will start the boiling of the boiler feed water. So the density in water lowers as it heats up. The hotter water and steam starts to rise from the colder water up to the steam drum where the steam will separate to the top. Water will also flow through the downcomer tubes back to the water drum, heating this up as well. The exhaust gases and combustion air from our fan are blown up to our funnel up stack. In cargo tanker ships, these gases can also be used as inert gas in our inert gas system, provided we configure the air to fuel ratio correctly and we analyze the low oxygen concentration, usually below 4 or 5 percent depending on the company standards. We then use this inert gas in our cargo tanks. Inert gas, however, is a topic I'd like to leave for a future video. So focusing on the steam in our steam drum, unless we use it, it will pressurize our boiler. Therefore, we have main steam valves that allow it to go to our consumers, like I previously mentioned. This steam is either used or forced to condense in our steam condensers. We then accumulate the condensate back in the hot well so that the cycle can repeat again. Pretty simple, right? However, boilers have many elements to ensure safe and proper operation. Some basic fittings are local level gauges that we engineers check locally and maintain so that we can view the level inside the steam drum. We also have remote level pressure differential transmitters that sense the difference in pressure within the steam drum so that we operators in the control room can always see the boiler water level. There are also alarms or shutdowns that activate when parameters start to go outside our set ranges. We have safety relief valves that open and release excess steam if the boiler internal pressure goes over high. There are also previously mentioned blow down and skimming valves that we operate regularly depending on our boiler water analysis to send and remove sediments from the boiler to overboard. We have our main and pilot burners that I mentioned that themselves have plenty of elements to function properly. I hope to make some maintenance videos of them in the future. We have the combustion fan that ensures the furnace is purged of any gases when the boiler is stopped and restarted, as well as maintaining a proper air to fuel ratio 
when the burners are on, keeping the oxygen part of the combustion triangle in check. There is also the entire fuel supply system for the boiler, which keeps the fuel circulating under pressure and heated. We usually use either heavy fuel oil or marine diesel gas oil, depending on MARPOL 6 environmental requirement. Also for safety, we have an auto shut down low water level float switch. But why do we have so many securities in the boiler? Well, think about it. We have a potential huge high pressure vessel with also a potential explosive environment. The combustion fan, as previously mentioned, always purges at the starting sequence of the boiler. So we remove the potential of explosive gases. But what about pressure or overheating? That's why we have auto shutdowns at high pressure. And if water level reaches too low as well, what dangers do you think could happen if water drops too low? Well first, less volume of water and the same amount of heat source coming from the burners will cause the water to rapidly evaporate and pressure will suddenly rise. This is a dangerous situation, so therefore we always keep a ratio of at least 40 to 60% water in the steam drum. Also, should there be low water level within the boiler, the heat on the boiler metal surface itself could rise. This could cause problems such as bursts inside the internal tubes. This can put out of operation the boiler and shut down our steam system, which is critical on most ships. This can cause various ship operation issues and delays. Therefore, to keep an optimal boiler water level, we have automatic feed valves to the boiler, which work in conjunction with the remote level transmitter. This valve opens or closes depending on the need to put more feed water into the boiler since it's constantly sending out steam to the consumers and the consumers have varied needs. Any excess water from our feed pumps is recirculated to the hot well to ensure that there's always pressure on the feed line. If these automatic valves were to fail, we also have an emergency filling line and valves which run in parallel. These can be manually opened to quickly fill up the steam drum with water. However, placing lots of colder water within the stream drum will cause a sudden pressure drop. Due to all of this, we crew of the engine room work hard to ensure that they are maintained treated and operated properly. All of our safety systems are tested at regular intervals to keep us and the ship safe. So, this whole video was just to give a basic overview of how a water tube boiler works. But really, the boiler has many, many more small details that can only really be learned by operation and going inside. But in any case, I hope to have at least basically demonstrated how steam, or how I like to say, usable heat is generated on the engine room. Well, one of the ways. Actually, when the vessel is underway or navigating, our steam is usually produced by the economizer or exhaust gas boiler using the exhaust gases from the main engine as a heat source instead of the burner. But that's a topic for the next video which I want to explain the flow of steam in our engine room. So till next time, success and nothing else. Seafarer.